I believe, although my memory doesn't serve, my memory is not perfect, this is 100 trees, bag, a bagging of 100 trees. Okay, so why does bagging work, right? So let's, in order to think about why bagging works, we have to think back about the ideal predictor. We, we could actually draw independent samples from the test distribution. But that's easy to analyze, right? So if we work, so this is ideal, ide, this is the ideal aggregate, not the bootstrap aggregate. The ideal aggregate, we can actually draw a new sample, training set samples from the test distribution. So that's H sub A, that's the ideal aggregate. And it is the average over you know, a few, a bunch of these samples, you know, and then we average their predictions, right? And then we can show what happens when we, instead of using the ideal aggregate, use the bootstrap aggregate. So you know, squared law, this is for squared laws because it's mathematically easy <coughs> to analyze in terms of the bias variance decomposition, bilinear expectation. This is how you get to the bias variance decomposition, um, just the manipulation of uh, basic probability and arithmetic. This inequality is induced by this inequality. I just moved the quadri quadratic term outside of the expectation. And then we use the definition of the ideal aggregate to replace some of these terms. And you get, and this equals this, right? So, so what, is, what is this saying? This is saying that the expected loss of the expected loss of my model class, or the expectation of the training of the of the training example I get, right, is 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 greater than or equal to the ideal the loss of the ideal aggregate predictor. Right? So, if I had access to the ideal aggregate predictor through multiple independent samples of my training set, that loss is no is no guaranteed to be no worse. Than the loss, than the expected loss of my model class. No. And you can work with this out yourself. This is just very standard um, algebra and probability and manipulation of expectations. And, and the key, and the key, the key property is this is this inequality. And this should be a less than or equal. Or sorry, the key is this inequality, right? Uh, and here it's a less than or equal to. And the ideal aggregate predictor has a huge improvement over. The, uh, over the uh, average model class loss if this difference is huge, right? And this, you, this is just, uh, you know, the variant, this is just, the, this, this is big if, if the uh, model class is unstable as well. There's no way to actually measure this for different prediction problems, it has a different value, but intuitively when this, when this difference is large, we get a big improvement from using an ideal aggregate predictor. If we instead think about the bagging predictor, what is, what is the bagging predictor? The bagging predictor is this, right? Which is not exactly this. And this and this inequality this inequality doesn't always hold in practice. It depends on the data set. But usually it holds in practice if you have a large enough data set where bagging starts to approximate re actual resampling. And when this inequality does hold, then bagging works. So sometimes, occasionally, bagging hurts. But usually bagging either doesn't help, but doesn't help much or helps a lot. Because usually we work with data sets that are sufficiently large. Okay, so in the last few minutes, I'm gonna cover random forest, which is just a very simple extension of bagging. So bagging is model class agnostic. You can work on it for any model class. SVMs, neural networks, in fact, uh, people do do bagging for neural networks. In fact, bagged neural networks are the <coughs> amongst the best performing models in practice. Random forests are specific to decision trees. So, the goal of bagging is to reduce variance, and in many ways, bagging can only do so much because it's resampling entire data points. Right? It's resampling entire data points, and resampling entire data points tends to asymptote. Right? Like if I do 100 resamples, so if, if I had access to the ideal aggregate where I could just sam draw new samples from the training set, then every new sample from the training set I get, I decrease the variance more and more. Whereas bagging the variance reduction asymptotes, like if I drew a thousand, if I draw 100 re bootstrap samples, I might not, I might do it about as well as if I had I drawn a thousand bootstrap samples. Right. And the forest basically says, okay, instead of just resampling training data points, let's resample training data points and features simultaneously. So here's the procedure. 
we sample S prime via bootstrapping from S. We train a decision tree on S prime. However, at each leaf node in the decision tree, where we do top-down training, and we select our queries, we sample the features. So instead of doing a for loop over all possible features, we do a for loop over a random sample of the features. And we do this sampling every time we do a, top, a branch of the top-down induction. And that's it. That's the only difference between random forests and bagging. So, so maybe I don't understand. So, so bagging, we, we went to the whole thing about how we should split at each trade, right? About the purity and all that we said. Like, here's how you should split. So this is entry training. Yeah, yeah, this is entry training. Yeah, so, so you're saying now, just, just do it kind of randomly. Yeah, just pick us a random set of features to split on random, and often just a random set of thresholds. Um, although you may want to choose that based on the distribution of feature values, or if you have really high features, but yeah. And then choose one of those, and then... The, the intuition is that that increases the variance of your model class, because you're injecting randomness. Okay, right? but why is that good? That is good because Vagic, well, again, I don't know if there's like a really sort of... Um, ironclad theoretical analysis like for bagging. But the intuition is that bagging, because it is resampling a finite training set, it doesn't it's not it's only approximating the ideal aggregate up to a up to a limit. Um, so when you say the ideal aggregate, what, what do you mean? The ideal aggregate is if I actually got actual independent samples from the test distribution over and over and over. Okay. okay. So the bagging aggregate it's not like that because you resample. Because you add, so the variance reduction process works, <coughs> okay. but right? it doesn't okay. keep going down. Yeah. So how do I increase more variability so that when I average it, it reduces the it decorrelates the trees even more basically, right? The trees are correlated because I'm bootstrapping from the same this data set, right? So they're they're going to be correlated, right? So I just want to introduce more decorrelation. Okay, so um, top down random forest training. So we'll go through this very quickly in a little short of time. So we start with this. Uh, start with the leap, start with the um, the root node. We decide only to look at h at random. Pick a split. In this case, it's uh, it's uh, this is the best possible split of the ones we looked at. When we look at this inter leap, splitting this leap node, we randomly decide only to look at gender. Over here, we randomly decide only to look at age again. So just every time you. Over here, we randomly decide uh, to only look at age again. So this, every time we do this, we just randomly select a subset of the features. And that's it. And then here is the uh, second to last slide, just the uh, empirical evaluation. This is from the paper empirical evaluation as far as linear algorithms. And uh, the main thing I wanted to look at, there's a number of things in here, is random forests up here at the top. So they do very well. And in fact, um, if you don't know what to do, you have a data set, you want to train a model, my first thing to say, I would tell you to do is train a random forest to see how it is. Not that you should use that as a thing for the cattle community project. <laughs> okay, so the next lecture, we're going to talk about boosting, which is a method for reducing bias rather than variance, ensemble selection, and recitation on Thursday.